Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Shh. Shh. Can you hear me now? I want to tell you a blessing. I'm so thankful for Randy Collins. He goes and gets our food every time. Uh, he is amazing. Do you all mind if I tell you a story about Randy for a minute? I I'm telling you, Randy Collins is man of the year. A guy called me last week. Come on up, Randy. I'm going to have you over in a word of prayer. And, uh, and he, had, he was in the Jude house. He came back. He came back because he was uh, uh, out of warrant, I guess. Spent a weekend in jail, and then he needed a ride back. So he needed a ride. This is like 8 o'clock last Friday night. This is when he called me. And, and he needed a ride to Union Station. And I'm in Virginia. And at 8 o'clock on Friday night, my eyes start to shut. You know what I'm saying? So I said, you only have one hope, Randy Collins. So, you know, he called Randy, and Randy went from uh, uh, near the, uh, the uh, football stadium where he lived. He came all the way over here, picked this guy up, and... Uh, what was that area? Brandywine. And took him all the way to Union Station. And I don't know that he knew him from other than just seeing his face. I'm sure he got home at 2 or 3 in the morning. Is that a blessing? Let's give him a big hand. Amen. Now let me tell you another story. I sent him to get the food. <laughs> Watch it, boy. I sent, him, I sent him to get the food tonight. And he went over and he said, I'm here to pick up the food for Fellowship Church. And they looked at him strange and said, what food? He said, you know, Fellowship Church. He was at Nick's of Clinton and he had to go to Three Brothers to get some food. So it's good to have Randy here. How about open us with a word of prayer, brother? Thanks. Well, you know, Nick's of Clinton is right next to the truck wash. So I had to get my truck wash before I came to the church. All right. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for our guests today. Lord, we thank you for our members, Lord, and we thank you for the ambassadors of your will. So many within our midst, Lord. We ask a blessing upon our Christmas time, and Lord, in the preaching and the celebrating of your birthday. We thank you in your, no your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. I understand that the food is ready, and we have two tables and the same thing on both sides. Am I right back there? And uh, we did run into a situation. We, we don't have any plates. So, but if you cup your hand really nice, it's going to be all right. Let's, uh, let's see here. Let's start with this uh, table number one back there where Merle's at. Why don't you all get up first and you go on that side. And then, uh, and then this table here where the preacher is, uh, we're going to get this table to go up on that side. Are you all listening to me? Can you hear me now? And then let's go with this table over here. There's an older fellow there, a nice old fellow there. Take that group and go over on this side. And, uh, and then this side here, Ray Remo. This table here on the other side, the left side. Are you serious? Oh, buddy, you are good. You got it. Is that what you put under his deck? Is that the stuff you put under the deck? Hello, we're going to lead you in a couple of songs before um, Pastor comes. Come on, ring those bells, our first song tonight, Would or this know? afternoon. Come on, come closer. You got 
the word, Stephen. Everybody likes to take a holiday. Everybody likes to take a rest. Spending time together with a family. Sharing lots of love and happiness. Come on, ring those bells by the Christmas tree. We remember this your birthday. Celebrations come because of something new. Celebrations we love to recall. Mary had a baby boy in Bethlehem. The greatest celebration of the Is the king, is the king. Come on, ring those bells, everybody say. Jesus, we remember this your birthday. Jesus, we remember this your birthday. All right. Well, hold an We need to hear you sing with us, O Holy Night. Oh, hear the angel. 
Can you hear me now? All right, what a blessing. I know this is early in the year for our Christmas party, so I want you all to just holler out to each other, Merry Christmas! Merry One more time. Merry Amen. Well, we are so blessed today, and Shelly is going to come up and play us a song on the piano, and then her husband, Shaw, who has been a blessing to our church, is going to be uh, coming up and sharing with us. We are excited.
If you, if you have your Bible this evening, if you don't, I understand it. Um, but I'm going to be starting in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and I want to say it is always a joy and an honor to be here and to see so many dear friends from many, many years gone by. And I'm going to say Donna and Marvin have been... Um, Tremendous inspiration to us and encouragement. Um, it's hard to believe that we were one of the kids that used to go to Bible study. I'm not a kid no more. <laughs> no one even thinks that of me. There's no mistake. Finally growing up. Um, but I want to thank this church for y'all's kindness through the years, your friendship, and what y'all mean to us. And it is our privilege to be here. Um, I don't have a Christmas message for you today. I've been praying about this, and this is on my heart, and I pray it would help you. Um, I don't preach anything just to preach. I don't preach. I don't just reach in my bag and pull out what I think is my best sermon, um, because if the Holy Spirit isn't lead, leading and directing, it's just words. So I'm praying to, this evening that the Holy Spirit would speak to your heart and minister to you, through God's precious word. What I want to preach about is the dangers of living in darkness and isolation. You said, wonderful. Hallelujah, we just had dinner. Um, but I'm going to tell you the truth, though, because there's things we're all experiencing in the day and age which we live. And, and every one of us, whether you want to admit it or not, all of us are struggling in some way or another. And I want to be real with you this this evening. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3, the Bible says, But if the gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. In this passage we read about the God of this world, Satan, blinding minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine unto them. Blinded by darkness. Blinded by darkness. This message was actually born, it, it's grown... The name of this, the message originally was Blinded by Darkness. Uh, one of the guys I, I, I met in Kentucky, a dear friend, Brother Tommy, where we live at is in western Kentucky. They had, there's no mountains where we're at. Usually you hear about Kentucky, you always think about mountains. But where we're at is the western end. Is just, it's kind of the terrain's about like here. But there's coal underground, and they dig down. They've actually got miles of tunnels underground where we live. We had to get something called subsidence insurance. I asked the insurance agent, I said, what, what is that? She said, in case your house sinks into the ground. <laughs> in case you fall into a coal mine. I'm like, wow. Uh, I thought they're all in the mountains. Now they're under the ground there. You can actually drive down some roads and you'll be driving and there's whoop, 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 whoop. I said, well, there's a tunnel <laughs> underneath us. Um, but anyway, but here's what I, but one of the guys, what they would do years ago, they would use donkeys, they would use mules to bring the coal out of the ground. And they said, and Tommy told me, this, the, some of those donkeys and mules, they lived their whole life underground and literally would go blind from the darkness. And I got thinking about it, blinded by the darkness, and it just got all over me. And then I got to thinking about things in the scripture and the reality in the scripture, darkness is a metaphor for sin and for wickedness. And the reality is, right here we just read, that Satan can blind. Not with the light, but with darkness. He said, Brother Shaw, I'm a saved person. There's no way darkness can affect me. You better believe it can. Because we're surrounded by it, aren't we? Amen, amen. He said, I don't see no darkness because you're already blinded. 
John chapter 3, verses 19 and 20, Jesus said, this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, lest neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. In 2008, the BBC uh, did a study on the effects of isolation and darkness. There was a guy that, that they had done this thing in some caves, and this one guy literally went down into these caves and stayed for like two months living in caves. And they, and they actually had a picture of him coming out, and, and, and what it did to him being in darkness for that long was, it was, I'm going to get into it. But here's one of the weird things. You wouldn't think that this would affect you, but time slowed down for him. Being in darkness, they, they had him come out and they said, we want you to count 120 seconds. Count 120 seconds. It took him five minutes because it had messed with his mind so severely. So BBC started doing, they, started, they did a study on the isolation because it's not just about darkness because people can be born blind and never see light but go, get along just fine. But when you isolate yourself, and are surrounded in darkness, it does something very different. Very different. Right now, because of the darkness around us, a lot of times what we want to do is, I'm just going to go be by myself. I just want to get away from everybody. Leave me alone. Don't touch me. Don't get near me. I just want to be by myself and embrace some kind of darkness. Or allow that darkness to just completely overwhelm you. And so here's what they did. I'm talking about a spiritual direction, but here's what BB, BBC did. They, did. they paid people to be in, they had a nuclear bunker, soundproof rooms, and they took these people and they kept them in there for 48 hours, two days, in total darkness, all by themselves. You say, well, I wouldn't have no problem. Man, I could sleep. Ooh, I would enjoy that quiet. But this is wild. Here's what happened to them. One of the things that happened was anxiety. They became very, very anxious. Well, let me ask you this. Has anyone in here ever been in a place where you couldn't see your hand in front of your face? Have you ever been somewhere where you were absolute darkness? That is creepy. If you've never experienced it, we went down into a cave one time, um, Shenandoah uh, Caverns, and they have lights down there. And the guy said, I'm going to let y'all experience complete darkness. And he turned the lights out. And it, I'm talking about it gets weird real fast. And you, I mean, I did. I held my hand up real quick. And I was like, <laughs> I didn't see nothing. It was freaky. But here's what, number one, they begin to experience anxiety, paranoia, extreme emotions. Some people would just begin to weep uncontrollably. And I mean, that was after one day. Then they began to experience hallucinations. One person said they saw a heap of oyster shells. These are British people. They, began to, they, they saw oyster shells. Another person saw a snake. Another person saw a zebra. There ain't no zebras in England. Cars. One person saw fighter planes. They're in a nuclear bunker, isolated, no sounds. But here's what happened. That's one of the things. When you're in that kind of conditions, complete darkness, complete isolation, your mind will mess with you. They heard sounds that were not there. Felt like the room was moving. Driven to the brink of insanity in only 48 hours. You said, why would you even bring this up, Brother Shaw? Because there's an amazing parallel that we're experiencing right now. Because right now, we're living, if you don't know this, if you're, new, if you're here and you're not saved, I pray God would save your soul. I pray that the light of the glorious gospel of Christ would shine on you this afternoon and you would see the truth of the gospel. Because only the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, can reveal that truth to you. But if you've been blinded by sin, blinded by this world, what you think is normal today is not normal according to the Scriptures. 
What our society is embracing today is darkness. And it's having its effect on the world and on the church. And what the devil wants to do is allow that darkness to overwhelm you so much where you say, look, I don't even want to go to church anymore. I don't want to be around nobody no more. Because it's so dark out there. Isaiah 5, 20, the Bible says, Woe unto them that call evil good, good evil. Put darkness for light, light for darkness. Bitter for sweet, sweet for bitter. We've lost our moral equilibrium. It's no longer sin. There's no longer evil. Everything is just your opinion. You just see it that way. That's your truth. I don't know if you've ever heard that. I've heard people say, that's just your truth. No, that is God's truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. There is absolute truth. There is good. There is evil. There is, there is right. There is wrong. There is truth. There is a standard. But what's happened right now, darkness has come in so much where it is blinded. So many. And I'm going to say this. I, I come from a group where we could be very, very harsh. I came from a group that used to, well, they still do, brag about having a bad attitude. That's nothing to brag about. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I don't want to have a bad attitude. I'm happy in Jesus. But it's easy to get a bad attitude when you're surrounded by darkness and you start trying to deal with, you try to help people and they hurt you. That's real life. As a Christian, you can be a Christian trying to live for God. He said, why does God allow those things? It builds character in us because we learn we do what we do for the Lord Jesus Christ, not for the results. We don't do what we do because other people say thank you. We don't do what we do because it makes us feel good inside. We do what we do for Him because people will hurt you. I know none of y'all have ever helped somebody and found out. You say, I get... I, this dude, he's struggling. I'm going to give him a little bit of money. Maybe I buy him some groceries. He said, man, can you help me out with some groceries? And you gave him money, and all you did was buy some crack? I've done that. Heroin. So now, I, you know what I did? It hurt me to the point. And I helped one dude. I mean, people can come up with some good lies. I know y'all don't know this. I mean, they can come up with some good lies. I had one guy, and, and this, it was, I was living up here, but it happens everywhere. I, lived, I know I sound like a hillbilly, but I lived here for seven years. <laughs> it didn't take away my accent. It kind of helped mold it a little bit. I'm going to tell you this. People in Kentucky make fun of how I talk. That's sad. <laughs> but anyway. But I was up here one time, and, and we come out of church, and I still had my church clothes on, and I was in my car, and this dude, he came up, and he's like, hey, man, can you help me out? Are you here? You, hey, man, can you help me out? I said, well, what's going on? He said, can you give me a jump? I said, yeah, I can give you a jump. I had my McDonald's. Um, back then, it was three bucks. Ain't three bucks no more for a value meal. And I said, yeah, I'll give you a jump. I, I, and I went to the car, put my food in. Next thing, he slid in the seat next to me. This wasn't in the sermon. This is free. He slid in, and he sat down. He's like, man, I'm going to tell you, I don't know if it's my battery. I think it's my alternator. And he, man, he began to tell this story about his, all kinds of stuff. I mean, this thing, I mean, a tearjerker. Time is over. I felt so bad for the man. And, you know, he's praise the Lord God so good. And I know you're a Christian man. <laughs> can you help me out? I said, you know what? I can't help you. I went to ATM, gave him some money, and said, well, let's go over to the car, your car. I got over to his car. He jumped out real fast, got in his car, took off. <laughs> so how did that make you feel? How do you think it made me feel? I ain't helping nobody ever again. That rascal done ripped me off. He knew I come from church and... I'm just being honest. I know y'all spiritual people would never feel. Did you cuss, Brother Shaw? No, I didn't cuss. But what it did, it made me say, I ain't going to help nobody. 
I ain't going to help nobody. And then I begin to read and the light begin to shine. And Lord said, so you help people, but you just need to use a little bit more wisdom. You come to me after church tonight and say, man, can you help me out with 20 bucks? I'm going to say, I'm going to go get you some groceries. <laughs> you ain't getting no cash out of me. I ain't buying crack for you or uh, prescription medication. I ain't buying none of it for you. Uh, but you need some groceries, I'll get you some groceries. Gas for your car, I'll pump it. <laughs> Y'all been there. But was that, that darkness can affect you and hurt you and cause you to say, you know what, I'm not going to deal with nobody anymore. I'm not going to talk to people no more. I'm not going to be nice to nobody no more. As long as I'm mean, they stay away. So it makes it all right. And that isolation will mess with your head. God never meant for us to be like that. Mm. I was going to tell something else. When you reject the light of God's word, the light of the Holy Spirit's leading, you will have no balance, you'll have no stability, you'll have no foundation. Hallucination, you'll start thinking things that ain't true. Nobody likes me. Nobody loves me. That's not true. If nobody else loves you, the Lord Jesus Christ, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might have life. That's one of those hallucinations that darkness is causing you to have. Don't isolate yourself. How much light are you exposing yourself to? rather than darkness. Psalm 119, 105, the Bible says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalm 119, 130, The entrance of thy words giveth light. It gives understanding unto the simple. Isolated darkness is a deception, not a strength. If you think that you don't need any help, you're wrong. That's the devil blinding you. We all need help. I could, pick, I could go around in here, and I won't do it, but I could go through and pick five people out. You think that you got it bad. So you don't know what I've been through. You don't know how I grew up. You don't know how my grandma talked to me. I had to wear Maid Pops rather than Nikes. I don't know, you don't know what a may, okay, I'm going to give you Virginia word. Joe, you know what may pops are? May pops. <laughs> may pops were Adidas with five stripes. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't know, Adidas had three stripes, may pops had four or five. They may pop off at any time because they're the cheap shoes. That's why they call may pops. Joe, you know all about it. <laughs> Joe, he said, I've lived it. <laughs> so those things, you said, man, I had it rough. I had it. You don't understand. You don't understand. Everybody in here has had it hard in one way or another. We've all been touched by it. We all can make some excuses. Why are we going to go in the hole and never talk to anyone ever again? But that's not the plan God has for you in your life. There still is victory in Jesus. We're almost home. God said to Adam, it's not good for man that he should be alone. And he created Eve. We need each other. We need fellowship. I love the name of this church, Fellowship Church. 1 John 1, 7, if we walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Hebrews 3.13, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you should be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. 
See, that's what the devil does. He wants to isolate you because of the darkness. And I got it in my notes. I was talking to my dear brother right before service. Do you know that there will never be a perfect church? Do you know that there will never be a perfect church? Why? Because none of us are perfect. Every one of us are affected by the fall of man. We are all a few bricks short of a chimney. <laughs> Some of us are a cube short of a chimney. But we're put together with the mortar of the Holy Spirit and the love of Jesus. And we're supposed to be interlocked one with another to help hold each other up, to help strengthen one another. That's what we need. And don't let the devil lie to you and say, look, you don't need that anymore. You don't need that. Because we all, we, we, we all do. Encourage one another. This right here tonight, this afternoon, whatever time it is, is an encouragement to me. Seeing each one of you, what if everybody that worked so hard to put this together, what if only three people showed up? That would have been, but praise the Lord, it would thank God for the three people, but how hard would that be? And you that came, you said, I didn't even want to come. I heard there was real free food. Well, I'm glad you came anyway. But I'm going to tell you, I've been encouraged today. Got to see some friends I ain't seen for a while. You know what that does? That encourages me. And I hope it encourages you. We need this. And when you think you don't, that's when you're being blinded by the darkness. Jesus, the Word of God is light. It's easy not to read this book. It's hard to do. Physically, our bodies, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, much study is weariness to the flesh. Reading the Bible, especially with us, because we live in a time of images, right? We got cell phones, we got computers, we've got screens, we've got all these images. And I used to tell my mama, why would I read a book when I can watch the movie? <laughs> I'm serious, y'all think I'm joking, huh? I still am partly serious about it. But when it comes to knowing God and knowing light, it comes through His Word. So, Brother Shaw, it's hard for me to read. We have been blessed. Now you've got your phone. It can read it to you. Brother Tommy back in, in Kentucky, my dear friend, Tommy, he's got it on his phone. And many times we've been in church. I do Bible study and I, I go to a passage of Scripture and he'd hit it on his phone. And all of a sudden, they'd start reading it to all of us. And he'd go... <laughs> He was getting embarrassed. He's trying to turn it off. Now, I, don't be embarrassed. Thank God you're listening. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can listen to it going down the road. You have that capability. You have that privilege. And what is that? That is light shining in the darkness. Light shining is pushing. See, the darkness can't overwhelm the light. When you turn the light on, darkness has to go. It's when you lo no longer turn the light on. Jesus is the light of the world. John 8, 12. And he said, because he's the light, we are the light of the world because he lives inside of us. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but sh shall have the light of life. And here's one of the greatest things. For not isolating yourself. You need to open up that light of God's word. Open up that light of fellowship with Jesus. He said, behold, I stand at the... In Revelation chapter 3, let me lay a little foundation. I ain't going to keep you long. I know y'all ate. Y'all doing good. <laughs> really, when I eat, usually, Shelly tell you, I eat, then I sleep. I can be completely upright in the chair and go to sleep. We came back the other night. Um, 
Marvin picked us up at the airport, came back, and I made a cup of coffee at midnight. He said, you're crazy. It don't bother me. I was drinking that cup of coffee. I had one swallow left, and Shelly walked in. She's like, hello. said, I was starting to head off into La La Land. I took my last swallow, brushed my teeth, went to bed. I can go to sleep anytime after eating. We need the light of Jesus. We don't need to give up. We don't need to run. We need to stay with him. Exhort one another. Exhort means encourage one another daily. Revelation chapter 3, when he talks about the last days and he's talking about the Laodicean church, the time that we're living in right now, the lukewarm age. And when it's lukewarm, Vance Abner said this, if it's too hot, if you get too hot, that will drive you to get cool. <laughs> or if you're too cold, it'll drive you to get hot. He said, but when you're lukewarm, you won't do nothing. You'll go to sleep. And here's what Jesus said to that lukewarm church. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, open the door. I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. So that light isn't just fellowship with our brothers and sisters. It's fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's knocking, desiring to fellowship with each and every person in here. So don't let the devil lie to you and say, God don't want to have nothing to do with me. God's done with me. God's finished with me. You got breath in your body. God's not done with you. You're here this afternoon. God's not done with you. You may come and say, this is my last time coming to church. And I hope it ain't. I hope the Holy Spirit has used this message because this sure isn't a Christmas message. But I pray it would help you. Acts 26, 18, here's what Paul wrote. He said to, about Jesus, to open the eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified. By faith that is in me. Jesus wants to turn your darkness to light. Do not isolate yourself. Keep going on for the glory of God. Each day is one more step closer to home. Roy, we's back there, and I don't mean to embarrass him. I do. That's fine. I see you over there. You're just talking about just pains in the body. I remember hearing the old people talk about hurting. I used to think, I hurt too. They don't even know. I, I hurt. I fall down. It hurts my knee. I've cut myself. It hurts. I don't know what them old people are talking about hurting. <laughs> my uncle... My uncle, I remember when he'd get up out of the chair, and I've done it here before. My uncle would get up out of the chair. He was in his 40s. He said, Ugh. <laughs> I didn't have my dad around. He was close thing to my dad. And, I was, and then one day it hit me. I finally asked him, I said, why do you make sounds when you get up? I said, that's an old man's sound. <laughs> Ugh. Just get up. Boom. And I can still remember the Holy Spirit bringing that smart aleck teenager. First time I said, Ugh. <laughs> I made it. I am now the old man. <laughs> I, I, made, I told Joe today when I saw him yesterday eating breakfast with readers on. I want you to get this. Eating breakfast with reading glasses on so he could see his food to get it in his mouth. You didn't think you'd ever be at that point in your life, would you, Joe? But guess what? My readers are in my pocket too. <laughs> but thank God one day we're going to put off this clay, this tabernacle that hurts, for in this Tabernacle, Romans says, we do groan. 
It's not about being unclothed, but to be clothed upon that I might give my new body. No more pain, no more suffering, no more tears, for the former things shall be passed away. There's still plenty of good in this journey, and that's why I want to encourage each and every one this evening. Don't give in. Stay on the road with the Lord Jesus. It's worth it all. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. I thank you for this precious, precious church. Lord, I've needed this encouragement. This church has helped me a whole lot more than I've helped them, and I thank you so much. And I pray that you would bless each and every one. Strengthen them, encourage them, help them right now in the time that we're living. Calling good evil and evil good. May we not give up. May we not turn away and say it just isn't worth it anymore. I'm, not, I'm tired of arguing. Lord, encourage them, strengthen them, give them that love, that Holy Spirit, that power. And encourage one another as that day approaches. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your salvation. And I do pray if there's anyone here today that is not saved, that has been blinded by Satan, don't know the truth, may you have revealed it today some way, because it's not me, it's you, Holy Spirit, that reveals truth. If they come to know you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for it's in thy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, uh, praise God. Thank you. Have you been encouraged tonight? Yeah. Let's give him another hand. Praise God. What a message. What an encouragement. We're going to close with a word of prayer. And remember, there's so much food back there, we've got to get rid of it all. Number one. Number two, when we close, I, I need as much help as I can get. We want to take these tables down, roll the tables back to the back, and stack the chairs. It only takes about 15 minutes if everybody helps. <laughs> so let's... Uh, What was that? I still didn't hear. I don't have my hearing aids in, so I'm free. All right. Let's close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight. I thank you for all those that have helped, all those uh, delicious foods that were put together at the back. We thank you all. And uh, thank you, Randy, for going and picking everything up. Uh, even though you did go to the wrong place. <laughs> and we love you, Lord Jesus. In your name we ask these things. Now, amen. amen. I want to tell you, Shaw's going to preach tomorrow at 11. So I want to encourage you to come on back, and we're going to have a real good time tomorrow. Amen? amen. Shake hands with somebody. Make somebody feel at home. All right. <laughs> <laughs>